work in the Namecheap Cloud team and we are the creator of uh, EasyWP. Um, EasyWP is a platform as a service based on Kubernetes and uh, basically uh, we provide uh, WordPress uh, hosting. Uh, um, we are using Kubernetes, we are using Golang, we are using a lot of tools uh, provided by DC and CF, uh, FluentD, um, Kubernetes, uh, Prometheus, uh, and we are also planning to try to implement open tracing. Um, why I decided to create uh, this talk? Basically because I had a problem. Um, I had a problem because in a cloud team, I, I develop uh, middleware applications in order to create uh, an abstraction layer of Kubernetes. Uh, you know, when you deploy an application on Kubernetes, you got a lot of resources. You got deployments, uh, you got uh, services, you got config map, and so on. Plenty, plenty of resources. Um, our application, named Infra API, uh, it's an abstraction layer. And uh, basically, we, are, uh, we created this application that is, uh, is mm, simply uh, an event source uh, application based on the pattern uh, producer-consumer. We are also planning to switch to CRDS, but it's a long path. And um, never mind, just focus uh, on uh, this example. And uh, when I joined uh, Namecheap a uh, few months ago, uh, they asked me to create some improvements. And obviously, when you have to create new features or just replace old features, you have also to measure and get sure that everything is working fine. And uh, how, you can, how can you check this? How can you ensure that everything is working as expected or maybe performances uh, are not dropping? Um, this is the reason why I started to um, get deeper with uh, Prometheus uh, and uh, using the Golang uh, uh, Prometheus uh, uh, client tool. I think that probably we have to start looking at the application. As I said before, um, okay. As I said before, uh, it's a event sourcing application. Uh, let's see what what it is. We got a main that basically uh, invoke the command execute. For uh, for those who, who know how Golang uh, works or use Go in uh, production environment, uh, I'm using Cobra. Cobra is a package uh, to create uh, nice uh, command line uh, interface applications. And uh, let me close the terminal. Um, we have our application named Prometheus Exporter Golang and uh, Basically, we are just creating and consuming fake jobs. Uh, I hadn't the time to create a real complex uh, application, so uh, I decided just to create a simple abstraction for applications. So uh, I want to create some applications Kubernetes. I want to manipulate applications, so uh, I got my subcommand named app. Um, on app, as you can see, I got some flex. Um, the application identifier, the name. I got the Docker image of the application and the amount of replicas to spin up. Um, I don't want to get deeper so much on uh, my application. I got a GitHub repository. So if you want to check it, you can do it. Just opening uh, the URL. Uh, oh. Here it is. I can share also the link after the end of the talk. So basically, uh, my application has two commands. Uh, as the produce command that uh, create an app resource, and then we have a consume. As I said before, I decided to split my application on uh, four queue because uh, we know it's a event sourcing application. We have queue. I'm using uh, a package named uh, RMQ. Let me check. Uh, I don't remember. RMQ. Yeah, adjust RMQ. And basically, it's uh, backed by Redis. So we are storing the task on Redis and the producer with some uh, goroutines, uh, fetches, and pop items, uh, and, uh, um, and process them. 
So um, let's see exactly which kind of, of applications we can create. Basically, just one. Uh, I decided, but I decided to perform various, uh, various uh, tasks. So I have a create task, an update task, a delete, and a read task. Basically, the crude table. So um, just start uh, the application. I provided also um, a readme where you can see how the applications work and why I created this. So I'm uh, going to deploy this application on Minikube. Minikube is a tiny Docker machine where you can test uh, Kubernetes. Uh, obviously, it's just a single instance, so maybe you, can, you cannot test uh, every aspect of Kubernetes. By the way, I'm going to create uh, my namespace uh, Prometherion. Uh, Prometherion uh, is my nickname. So, um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just checking that everything is fine. So, okay, we already got our namespace. So, just now I'm going to build my application. I provided um, a Docker file, so let's uh, cd in the in the folder, uh, it's not documents, but it's go. Um, yeah, this is. Just now I'm uh, evaluating uh, variables of Minikube and I'm going to build my application. As you can see, I'm uh, using DEP as a package manager for Go. Uh, there are uh, plenty tools, but I'm feeling comfortable with DEP. And uh, right now, I'm just downloading packages uh, and starting building a tiny um, binary named uh, Prometheus, uh, Prometheus Exporter Golang. And after that, I'm using uh, multi-stage builds just to get uh, a tiny Docker image. And as you can see, I got my application. In fact, My application is working. Um, as you can see, I got several flags and uh, several subcommands, but I don't want to type uh, each command I, uh, because uh, it could be so long. So I created some Kubernetes uh, manifest. I'm going to deploy them. So basically, we got several deployment because uh, um, I decided to split the task in uh, queues, several queues. Uh, we got the create, read, update, and delete. Same for the service. And then, as you can see, we got also Grafana deployed and also Prometheus. Why this? Because obviously we have to store uh, our metrics on Prometheus, and we also need to create some dashboard, some uh, visualization of this data. Uh, and Grafana do the job. Uh, after that, I also created a service for Prometheus that is needed by Grafana, and uh, I also deployed Redis and a service of Redis. So let's see what's going on. Uh, obviously, K is an alias of kubectl. Um, okay, we got our application running, and let's see what uh, they are doing. Yeah, can you see? I'm also using CERN. CERN is a nice tool, and uh, um, it uh, enables us to see various logs from various uh, containers. You can use uh, a pod selector label, and you can also um, select, you can also decide to view only the container inside the pod or something like that. So, um, Let's see, for example, the, no, it's enough. So um, we are starting consuming task of queue create and starting consuming task, 10 task and uh, polling every one second. Okay, but there are no jobs. 
How can we do jobs? We can do using uh, a tool, or maybe better, just a simple bash script named produce. Um, produce is just a random creator. We select some actions, we select some names, and then we select uh, some uh, Docker images. And after that, we start injecting jobs inside Kubernetes using the uh, resource uh, of kind job. Um, obviously, this is just an example. Uh, what we do in Namecheap? Basically, we have an HTTP uh, REST API where we uh, enable uh, customers, but mainly we, we are the only customers that are using the service because it's not uh, yet open. And uh, this HTTP interface uh, push jobs uh, in the queue in order to get consumed by the consumer. And uh, as you can see, we are using uh, my Docker image. And we say, please connect to Redis. Redis uh, uh, double point uh, 6379, the standard port, using a connection tag uh, Kubernetes and produce uh, a new app with this action, that basically it's a crude table, uh, creating this uh, name, uh, creating a resource with this name, with this image and this uh, replica. And restart policy never, obviously, because we want just a single uh, job. And that's all. So let's start to produce some data. Okay. And basically, we created a new application. As you can see, we are starting consuming a new delivery, and we are marshalling uh, the JSON of the signature deployment create. Um, just for example, I am going to show you with you how is made a signature. Uh, I'm using JSON, but uh, as you prefer, you can use uh, gRPC, you can use uh, GOP, that it's a binary form, uh, uh, it's a standard, uh, binary uh, marshalling uh, or encoding uh, of uh, Go objects. By the way, this is my task. So basically we have task and I'm saying that we got a signature that is v1 deployment create, as you can see here. And then we got uh, an unique identifier. This is required because we need to understand which task we need to perform. <coughs> And then we start uh, serializing the, uh, the, the task. So we are putting uh, uh, um, a slice of byte uh, and eventually uh, returning uh, an error. So let's see uh, exactly how works uh, our queue, or probably manager. Yeah, queue is the interface. So um, as you can see here, we got a uh, start consuming, that is uh, our go routines starting uh, performing uh, creation, update, and so on. This is the interface uh, of um, RMQ, so it, this is not so important right now. Um, this is the consumer. Okay, probably our task has been completed. Yeah, as you can see, I faked just uh, processing. Um, Let's, stay, let's see why I wrote, I wrote this. Uh, this is the, the funk that, um, where you have to implement your business logic. Uh, right now, I'm just faking a process, as I said before. I hadn't time to create a real application. And basically, I'm waiting some time, uh, waiting a uh, uh, top time of seconds. And after that, um, as you can see, this is the switch where I basically decode the delivery. And uh, if uh, the ID of the decoded object is uh, an application create, uh, I start decoding uh, and doing everything. And after that, I got also a default switch in case uh, somebody pushed a um, an unsupported uh, task signature, or probably um, an attacker is trying to inject some uh, uh, malicious task uh, inside my queue. Uh, you know, shit happens. Uh, up to that, I got some uh, 
stuff that you can see. We got task metric with label values. What is this? This is the core um, code of uh, my application, and basically the talk is based on it. Uh, we are talking about Kubernetes. Uh, sorry, we are talking about Prometheus metrics, and these are the Prometheus metrics. Nice. I decided to create a simple um, struct named con consumer where we are storing some variables uh, and martial metric. As I said before, um, when you write applications in Go and you need to decode JSON, uh, the verb to decode JSON is named unmarshal. You marshal um, an object to JSON and you unmarshal uh, a JSON to an object. Why we need this metric? But because uh, probably um, uh, we could accidentally push it to Redis uh, a string instead of a JSON. So we need to take uh, to to get metrics about uh, this error because probably it could be uh, really interesting to understand why somebody pushed a string and not a, um, a task signature. Um, let's see exactly why we have all of these options. Um, as you can see, I created namespace. What is namespace? Um, before uh, dipping a uh, diver in uh, metrics, uh, I need to do a little preface. I decided to create this uh, talk and this uh, demo because uh, I didn't find uh, um, any useful uh, article or video explaining how to create your metrics. And uh, I had some troubles, and this is why right now I'm here trying to talk and explain you how it's working. So, um, best, guy, uh, best, uh, best practice uh, defining metrics uh, say that uh, you have to create namespaces of your metrics. So, if um, I got a metric that is named task, error, and marshal, this is, um, I, this is my, my metric, but I have also to separate uh, um, metrics uh, by namespace and subsystem, uh, like uh, how we do in uh, Kubernetes. I mean, um, if you got an application, this application maybe is named the EasyWP, and you want to separate EasyWP staging from production, maybe you can uh, write EasyWP, EasyWP underscore staging or EasyWP underscore production. This is the reason why I decided to create a namespace Prometheus, just my nickname, and then a subsystem. The subsystem is really useful because maybe your application is made of several components. In this case, we got just a worker, but probably we could have uh, um, an HTTP client uh, or uh, a curator or something like that. Uh, I know that could uh, sound, str sound strange and weird, say that your application is made by several components, um, but it could happen. So, um, we got this uh, metric named Task Error Marshall, and we also need to provide some uh, uh, description about that. Um, I forgot to tell you that uh, best practice uh, uh, tell to use a just underscore. So try to, to don't use a, a dash or a, um, uppercase letters and so on. Um, but this is a metric, okay. But uh, exactly what kind of metric? We know that uh, with Prometheus we can create sev we can uh, scrape several metrics. Uh, in this case, I'm just using a counter. What is a counter? Just uh, um, a metric that can increment uh, its value by one uh, or other values. So, um, let's see in uh, Grafana, first of all. So, um, okay. Mimic IP. This is my IP. We need to assess Grafana and probably I created a Grafana service of type node port in order to don't uh, use uh, ingresses and so on. This is the right port. Okay, this is Grafana, admin admin because it is a basic installation. And right now I'm going to add my Prometheus data source. 
I'm using uh, Prometheus. And let's see. Yeah, it's working. And now I'm going to deploy a sample dashboard. I provided in the repo also a sample dashboard. And yes, as you can see, we got some data. Um, however, I just want to interact with Prometheus, so I'm going to do some query. Maybe this is not the right tool, the right graph. Yeah. So these are all my metrics that have been scraped by Prometheus uh, from my application. As you can see, I got several metrics, and let's see exactly if we are scraping also this one. Yeah, we are scraping it. As you can see, we got no data because uh, there are no martial errors. Um, I'm going also to create several jobs in order to populate some data. Update. I'm waiting the read. Okay. The read is uh, the one that uh, is not yet implemented in the application, basically for this reason. Because I want to create uh, some uh, uh, data for unrecognized signature. So we, are, we need to wait to get some data because uh, Prometheus scrapes metrics uh, every 30 seconds, but uh, it's not the standard. You can decide uh, how many seconds you have to scrape, to scrape data. Let's see if we got data. And as you can see, yeah, we got rejected task. Let's see how we push data. So uh, rejected metrics. Uh, as you can see, this is the name. And we got also const label. Exactly, what are, what are labels in uh, Prometheus metrics? Uh, um, Labels are useful if you want to group data and separate also data in order to perform some basic queries. Um, it's a bad practice uh, maybe have some uh, matrix name task processed create. This is wrong because uh, we could have also create update foo and so on. With labels, instead, we can use, it, we can use uh, um, some selectors. So we can get Q equals name. In this case, is uh, read. OK? This is also useful because uh, uh, we, you can use uh, the Prometheus uh, query language to group data or extract data. Um, let's see exactly where we are rejecting the data. Here it is. Rejecting task due to unrecognized signature. Here it is. Exactly what we are doing here. First of all, we are uh, rejecting the delivery. After that, we are, we are using uh, the member of the struct, uh, and we are pushing uh, a new increment with uh, a label value, with this ID. OK? In fact, as you can see here, this is um, a table inside Grafana. And this table s says that we got uh, one item of, the, of this uh, signature that has been rejected. Uh, you can imagine that if you don't use labels, this could be uh, even worse to visualize this data. Um, after that, let's see if we got more data. Not yet. Yeah, here it is. <coughs> this is the percentile of successful task. Um, basically, I want to measure if we got some uh, uh, tasks that are performing or not. Why this? Because uh, 
basically when we talk about Kubernetes uh, and Golang and microservices, uh, it's also related to DevOps. And we, when we talk about DevOps, we are also referring to the CAMS uh, pillars. Uh, I don't remember. Pillars. Pillars. Yeah, pillars. And um, it's, a, it's about culture, it's about uh, automation, it's about uh, learning, it's about uh, measure, it's, all, uh, it's also about uh, sharing. And when you deploy applications, uh, you need to ensure that uh, they are behaving uh, correctly and uh, you also need to check if something is not working as expected. As you can see here, these, uh, these are just fake data. So um, maybe you can see, hey, What's going on? Why my deployment update is taking so much time to perform? And with this data, you can also create alert because Prometheus uh, provides also the alert manager that enables to send webhooks, uh, emails, uh, notifications, and so on. And, and uh, based on that, you can uh, decide to wake up your uh, op uh, engineer or probably perform some actions, maybe roll out a new version uh, or whatever you want. And um, after that, um, I was talking about const label. Uh, const label are used just to tag some metrics about the queue I'm consuming. So, as you can see here, I got my label queue with value read. This is this is uh, uh, made. Of, this has been. It is have been uh, made possible by using constant labels. Um, we have also to speed up probably because uh, time is uh, running up. And uh, I want to just to show you uh, the new histogram back. Uh, with Prometheus, we, you can create gauges, you can create uh, counters, but you can also create uh, histogram that uh, basically are often uh, used to measure HTTP requests, uh, or in this case, also to measure se simply uh, how your application uh, uh, took time to perform the selected task. And um, as you can see, I'm, create, I'm using uh, some buckets, and buckets are really, really important because you have to select some values, and these values uh, are mandatory in order to get this uh, nice visualization. The percentile, percentile in Italiano. And uh, also here I'm using constant labels just to mark the metric uh, in ba based on the queue. And I also got my task name and the success. So let's see uh, how I'm performing uh, the push of the metrics. Okay. Uh, we are consuming the delivery. We are performing whatever we want. I'm faking just the results. It, this is a random uh, Boolean value. So if uh, it's not working, you unlucky guy is the error. And after that, I start measuring, uh, um, well, no. I, I remove time from the start time. As you can see, I declared um, a variable here, name it start time, time now. And um, after that, I push data with label value ID, and ID we know that is the signature ID, with the um, status, this is the sprintf uh, function to print the uh, boolean value, if r equals to nil. And after that, we say observe the duration seconds. In fact, if we want to see the data, these are all the data that we are grabbing. Um, it's not so useful, and this is why we can use uh, uh, the histogram quantile function provided by Prometheus. By it was task, I don't remember. Probably, oh, let me check. Okay, here it is, back to normality. Um, I faced some issues when I was using Instagram uh, uh, back because uh, as you can see, 
uh, with label values, uh, it's a variadic function. I got uh, several uh, string objects. Uh, why this? Um, basically, as, you, as uh, we saw before, we are using uh, also label names. Uh, this is the second argument when you have to create uh, a new histogram back. Uh, first are histogram options, and then we got the label names. So, basically, what is doing uh, when we use uh, with label values? Uh, it's going to push my ID to the label task, and then push the successful operation, this one, if it's true or false, this one, to the label, to the label uh, success. And that's it, basically. Um, I think that we run out of time, and uh, I hope that everything is clear, even uh, the talk, uh, it's really uh, a difficult topic because there are a lot of uh, stuff involved. But if you have questions, uh, you can ask me, and I will be uh, happy to answer your questions. So thank you so much.